Um, could I invite Professor uh, Susan uh, Mitchie, and I hope I'm pronouncing your. Um, <laughs> Thanks. It's actually a, a Scottish name originally, so it's Mickey. Um, just to introduce myself, I'm a part of the UK government scientific advisory group in emergencies, behavioural science advisory group, and I'm also a member of Independent Sage, which works um, in parallel. Uh, alongside uh, the Government SAGE Committee. And um, as independent SAGE, we have really considered uh, the evidence in relation to uh, many of the issues that come up. And I suppose the three overarching concerns that we've been addressing is how to minimise death and disability, how to uh, promote and help uh, maintain as many jobs and get the economy going um, as efficiently and uh, soon as possible, and also how to open the schools safely. And I should say, when it comes to jobs and workplaces, we're also talking about uh, safely. Our view is that we have um, around three to four weeks before the autumn and the cold weather and the less UV sets in, uh, which will pose uh, new challenges uh, for us because uh, COVID doesn't like the cold um, and before we have an influenza season setting in to really drive um, COVID down. And when we talk about um, elimination, I just want to clarify terminology because I think what Professor Hennigan was referring to was eradication. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about elimination. If I could use an analogy of uh, fires. In Ireland, as in the UK, we have a, a zero fire policy. That means we want no fires and we take every measure we can to um, ensure as much as we can that there will be no fires. However, we know that fires will occasionally break out and we have systems in place to jump on those fires quickly so they don't spread into the awful situations we have seen in Australia, for example, last year with the large forest fires. So that's what elimination means, and that's what zero COVID means. Now, in terms of um, what I would like to uh, kind of add to what's been said already, um, one of the things we feel very strongly is that um, health and wealth should not be pitted against each other. That what we want is to increase business confidence and we also want to increase consumer confidence. And to achieve both of those things, we need to have transmission rates in the community um, to an absolute minimum, alongside effective tra test, trace and isolate systems and, as been previously, previously said, uh, border controls. Um, I'm a behavioural scientist, so I'm especially interested in the behavioural aspects of test, trace and isolate, which needs to be addressed in order to make it effective. And um, I I'm sorry to say we haven't achieved that in the UK yet for uh, various reasons which we may get on to. Um, and finally, I wanted to really raise one of the issues, which is uh, the question of whether the population would really go with what is needed in order to um, eliminate coronavirus, to get a COVID zero situation. Because what it would need over the next three or week, four weeks is really to take every measure, which includes uh, restrictions, and probably more restrictions uh, than you have in Ireland at the moment, on the basis that that will then allow the certainty and the confidence which the business community and the population in general so want to be able to get on with their lives and their jobs. And the experience we've had in Ireland, as in the UK, as in many other countries, is when it's explained to the population why measures are needed, even though those measures need require sacrifice on their behalves, then they will adhere to it, as we saw with the original lockdown. And a couple of things are really important here. It is not only telling people what to do, but explaining the rationale and why, so that people understand it. And I believe that um, people would understand a zero COVID policy 
if it was put to it. And secondly, uh, what's required is a trusted leadership um, to communicate that in appropriate ways to the population. Um, and also to do that with an understanding of which parts of the population, for example, find adherence most challenging. In the UK, I suspect also in Ireland, it's young people and especially young men. So it's very important to tailor strategies uh, to, those, to those groups, you know, using role models of various kinds like uh, sports uh, people, um, uh, music, musicians, other celebrities. Um, and finally, to do this in partnership, in consultation with the communities. So as much as possible, um, the policies are thought through together and the strategies to achieve the aims of the policies are kind of co-produced with the communities and not imposed top-down on the communities. And I'm happy to expand more on these points and indeed other points uh, during the discussion. Thank you.